And welcome to tonight's show. Uh, in light of recent events, I thought we would talk about Sid Vicious. Um, considering the band that he was a part of wrote a song called God Save the Queen. Have weird feelings about the British monarchy and whatnot. I, uh, it's funny. All you got to do is go over to certain communities on Twitter and you will see a completely different reaction to what you might see on, I guess, what you would call mainstream Twitter about the Queen. It's it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Um, so there is, you know, I love Far Out Magazine. They do great features commentary they're a british magazine they did an article back in august about sid vicious it's an opinion it's called hear me out it's time to let go of the cult of sid vicious and i agree i really agree i think this is a good it's written by someone i'm going to butcher this name so sorry it's written by someone named Aaron a-r-u-n starkey like richard starkey like ringo star uh, and before we read it, we're just going to dive into some very quick sort of updates and news and things. Gouge away my feature film. If you missed the previous broadcast that we had a day and a, uh, the, the other day, Gouge away made its world premiere at the genre blast film festival. It was awesome. We ended up taking home the, the, the independent spirit award called the genre blast forever award. Uh, a great honor. Uh, Nathan Reagan and uh, Chad. And the whole team put on such a wonderful event. I cannot wait to go back. I'm going to be doing, we're going to have more screening events for, for Gouge Away. If you are a Patreon or a YouTube member, you can watch Gouge Away right now in 4K. It is, it has been, the, the screener cut has been uh, uploaded. So check it out. What's up? What's up, Michelle? How are you? Good evening to you. Angus, how are you, sir? Steve Lucas, thank you very much. Much appreciated. And yeah, we I have Instagram live running as well tonight. I'm going to try and do it on a regular basis just as like an extra thing. And again, I'm not a smoker. I'm a reformed smoker, but I sort of picked up this terrible habit of holding this cigarette-like thing in my fingers. I like the sensation of it. So you'll excuse the weird paper straw fetish that i seem to have accrued recently what's up jagger how are you um yeah so there's more stuff coming for the patreon mark your own video keep your eyes peeled for that very tentatively eerie von part two very very tentatively on that one at least if you are a patreon youtube member that sort of thing additionally we're going to be going live here as often as possible but we're not going to go live for hours on end we're going to try and keep it keep it short and sweet and by short maybe i don't know i don't know what short looks like we're, we're still still figuring that out but I'm, I'm eating time just bsing so let's let's dive into the topic we talked we talk about the sex pistols a lot on this channel and i I've, i don't know i've sort of um reacquainted myself with the with the pistols uh via steve jones book you know um his book lonely boy phenomenal read and then i what we watched the we reviewed pistol go check out that video and we've talked about the beef behind pistol between uh johnny rotten and the re remaining surviving pistols and it's been a, a fascinating journey but and we've also talked about sid vicious in a variety of ways how and we've even dwelled on the notion of why is sid vicious so iconic or why is he why is he venerated as like this punk icon uh something that never really had to make sense listening while i work i hope my internet connection doesn't go out i hope so too good luck jagger come over to youtube it'll be better michelle you too if you have a youtube channel much better over there um <laughs> sometimes you just have to hold a cigarette even if you no longer smoke yes this is not actually a cigarette it's a paper straw just to avoid temptation but yes you are right michelle about that what's up we got brian in the house he says ironic to talk about the sex pistols the night the queen died yes that's kind of like why <laughs> god save the queen um 
I don't know, man. I, you know, it's funny. I, all right, what, real quick, I, I will, I will dive on this. I will, I will briefly dwell on this as it relates to other countries. It's interesting to me how much like America, you know, England has, England has committed all sorts of, I don't know what you want to call it. They've, they've done a lot. Let's just put it this way. They've done a lot in the name of imperialism. And the monarchy is this lasting symbol of imperialism. I know Twitter, I've seen this on Twitter too. Twitter's kind of split down the middle. And so it's this idea of like, yes, the queen, the person um, was, was a great person or a good person or whatever, but the, the institution that she represented as a monarch um, is part of a long tradition. And there are certain groups, communities of people that feel very differently so it's an interesting divide. It's it's actually it's kind of a racial divide, a bit, a bit, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm not English. I don't really. I don't know if I have a right to have a horse in the race. I just find it funny because I've seen uh, criticism towards other countries for I don't know. It's just interesting. It, it, it's interesting to me. And I guess what you're supposed to say, "Long live the king." I don't know. I don't know how I feel about all that. Not that I wish anybody to not live long, but you know what I mean. Let's move on. Let's talk about, we're going to talk now about Sid Vicious, the, the icon Sid Vicious. So previously, that's right. Now it is God Save the King. Um, so previously on the show, we, um, we've we we've discussed how like, you know, Sid Vicious, I mean, he's not really, he doesn't really know how to play his instrument. And he's sort of, uh... <laughs> yes, Lynn. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's all I could think about when I heard the news today. Just like this. This is why I was like, oh, let's do this topic. Uh, you know, that Sid Vicious was not a very accomplished bass player. That he was, in fact, he was even more, more so of a front. He was, he would have made up for a better front man and was a, an original contender. In fact, they confused the Johns. We've talked about that before. Johnny Rotten, Johnny Lydon was part of a gang called the Gang of Johns, and John Simon Ritchie, who's Sid Vicious, was one of those guys. He was supposed to audition for the Pistols, and it ended. they ended up going with Johnny Rotten. And, of course, Johnny Rotten brought his friend in as they pushed Glenn Matlock, the only, like, the, the true, like, the core songwriter, the core of the musicality in that band, pushed that dude out for Sid Vicious. And it's interesting how <clears throat> this idea of, like, what punk is supposed to, like, encapsulate, like, you know, it's supposed to represent this, you know, um, sort of tenacious attitude uh, in the face of of maybe not being skilled at something, meaning that like the gatekeeping that comes with being skilled at something is almost superseded by the attitude and desire to just do it anyway, whether you're good or bad, you just don't care. And who better personifies that? Than a guy like Sid Vicious, who, as I said, can could hardly play the bass. Although this is contested too, and you know, you'll have some people say, "Oh, you know, if you listen to the last show on uh, Wonderland, that you know he is playing bass, but you know it's really kind of bad. Kind of played bass on Bodies, the song Bodies. But you know, Steve Jones has always said, you know, I Steve Jones is the one who plays bass on on Nevermind the Box. And um, you know, additionally, what would have happened to the Pistols? Something else we talked about. What would have happened to the Pistols had they not um, pushed out Glenn. They might have recorded another album. They might still be around. They might have made it into, they might have made it through the 80s. It might have been really bad. It might have been really good. Who knows? We don't know anything because, you know, it didn't happen. But we speculate. We speculate on these things. So that's what, I, that's the fun, the fun of speculation. What I speculate is that the band would have had more longevity. They would have put out more records. Although at the same time, you know, the idea that the, the pistols were a flash in the pan for the year of 1977, really, um, you know, I guess through, yeah, through 77 into January of 78, the fact that they just sort of, they burned bright and, and burned out, isn't that, that's also the kind of idea is that punk is like this, it's like this youth movement, right? Live fast, what is it? Live fast, die young, leave a good looking corpse. I don't know how good looking Sid Vicious's corpse was, but he sure lived fast and died young. You know, and that's kind of so in a way for as much as we, let you know, people, we, whoever likes to call Sid Vicious, a, you know, whatever, a poser, or like, you know, not really, you know, sort of just posturing. In fact, he might be the the most punk, whatever you whatever punk means, you know, icon of all. 
you know, and again, people will get, you know, you get wrapped up and caught up in definitions. You can't define punk. Once you define punk, punk isn't punk anymore. You know, there's so many different paradoxes around this sort of stuff, but you know, the idea, I think the basic idea is youthful tenacity, self-empowerment through artistic entrepreneurship, you know, um, balking at perfection for, um, just doing it, doing the thing. Um, it's a lot. There's a lot. Jagger says, ultimately my belief on Sid being such an influencer on punk comes down to, it's an interesting case study, almost of a life short lived, but live fast and hard and crash and burn. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Bob says, don't know if you mentioned this, but Sid played drums for the very first Susie Sue and the Banshee show. That's right. And additionally to that, he was also almost the lead singer of the damned. He lost, he auditioned to be the lead singer of the damned and lost out to Dave Vaney. And he hated Dave Vaney for that. Apparently he tried to try to hurt him physically hurt him um, because Sid vicious most certainly had a propensity for violence as we will talk about. Angus says, if they would have sustained longer, the pistols would have had to fire Malcolm McLaren. Of course they would have. But at the same time, Malcolm McLaren is the one that's sort of driving what makes the pistols popular in the first place, right? As soon as they saw what, what they could get from doing the Grundy show, suddenly they transformed from being abandoned to a spectacle. And the spectacle is what took them to such, you know, soaring international heights. You know, had they just remained a working punk band, they probably would have just they probably would have been on the same level as, say, like, I don't know, like the damned or like, you know, maybe the clash or something. They were above all the others. They pushed up because they were because they were so sensationalized in the tabloids. Everybody around the world heard about the pistols because of their exploits and, and what had happened. So it's a uh, it's a catch 22. It's sort of a catch 22 in a way, I, I guess, I guess so. Let's go to the let's go to the piece that we have here. Before we do, we're going to take our first sponsor break. And did you guys know that I designed T-shirts? I even have a pistols inspired pizza shirt. I like to design pizza themed punk shirts because I got the show Pizza Punk on the channel. Well, I make T-shirts and you can get those T-shirts down in the store descriptions below. Uh, it's one of many ways to support the content on this channel as well as buying a cup of coffee, joining the Patreon, becoming a YouTube member. Thank you to everyone who does support the channel. Thank you to everybody who just watches the videos. That most certainly helps, you know. Um, so without further ado, check out some of these T-shirts. Consider buying one if you are in the, uh, uh, if, you, if one of your hobbies is wearing T-shirts. T-shirt casualty, T-shirt casualty. Very tight. T shirt casualty, T shirt casualty. Very tight. I wish Jeff made some T shirts too. Hold on, I think he does that too. I can order them in the description below. And I can impress the friends that I know. Okay, now you might notice some links down in the description. I have a t-shirt store set up. I will be fixing that. I have a lot of updating to do. I have to update the spring store. You're going to see a variety of other shirts. Uh, the Friends Fiends shirt, like it's like the Friends logo, but it says Fiends. That's a shirt design I have up. Yeah, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of designs up that you can't see. So check that out. In any case, let's let's dive in now. We're, we'll have more sponsor breaks a little bit later in the show. I'm trying to stay structured here. Okay. Okay, here it is. We got our little chromy chrome tab. Yeah, I like I dig this dude's thoughts on Sid Vicious. I thought it was worth it's worthy of a show. Excuse me, I'm a little burpy, <clears throat> burpy burperson today. Thank you, George. 
George appreciates all the music history deep dives. Yeah, man, I love doing this stuff. I got a good Tommy Ramone shirt. Uh, not Tommy Ramone shirt. Tommy Ramone episode coming up. I think would be pretty cool. All right, let's talk about this. This is a, a music opinion, and this is from, uh, as I said, it's from Aaron Starkey. I guess that's Aaron, A-R-U-N. And it was published on Monday, August 22nd, 2022 on Far Out Magazine from the UK. Really like this website. We've We've been here before. I shall read the spiky hair, the leather jacket, the attitude. Even before his death in 1979, Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious was hailed as the personification of punk spirit. Even if you're not familiar with the work of the Sex Pistols, the likelihood is that you recognize Sid Vicious, given that the totems of his influence remain scattered throughout society. This is a phenomenal writer. Holy crap, does this person know how to write? Starkey is a phenomenal writer. Wow. Vicious, born John Simon Ritchie, has been an ever present has been an ever present in pop has been ever present in pop culture since the late 1970s. Even today, Vicious has a strong following which has been immortalized through portrayals by a random pretty boy in Danny Boyle's miniseries Pistol and by Gary Oldman in the famed biographical film Sid and Nancy. Although his terrible cover of Frank Sinatra's song My Way is wrongly lauded, Vicious's spirit is alive and well. He is coveted as a complex anti-hero, a misunderstood product of his environment, and... One, which was the meaning of it's better to burn out than fade away. I feel like they glorify that with him. It's like they that's what they use. They that's what they do, that they glorify him as it's better to burn out than fade away as a complex antihero. This guy totally like so succinctly understands who and what Sid Vicious is through his genius writing. Their genius writing. I don't know who uh, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wonder, and again, I wasn't really conscious at the time to really take, take observation, but I wonder how, what kind of jump happened after the Sid and Nancy movie came out directed by Alex Cox starring Gary Oldman and the, uh, the mom, uh, Monica from, from shameless. I forget her name. I apologize. What? did that do for the legend of Sid Vicious? And he, furthermore, how much of the Sex Pistols legend, reputation, brand is bolstered by Sid Vicious and everything that happened after the Sex Pistols? You know, that's something else to consider. So in a way, even though he didn't contribute to the music, he contributed to like the sensationalist aspects that was one ginormous component of the pistols in the first place right it's it's really interesting when you think about so in a way you know he has 12.5 percent of the estate of the uh, uh sorry of the ownership of the pistols that the 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 sid vicious estate and because he never had kids there's like some cousin who's inherited uh quite a lucrative i guess estate from his relative and in a way, I guess, you know, I always kind of thought, wow, what a piece, man. I bet Glenn Matlock is kind of pissed, but it kind of makes sense. I listen, I mean, at the end of the day, I want Glenn Matlock to receive what's properly owed to him. But in terms of what was brought to the table, like all around, like the the everything I just said, the sensationalism, the the reputation, the brand, the branding. You know, and that's what's so funny. That's the other paradox is that when you think about punk, you don't think about branding. It's anti-branding. But Malcolm McLaren was a he was a marketer. He was an opportunist. And he 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 saw this. He didn't see this from he didn't see this from a musical perspective. He saw that he saw it all from a from a circus perspective. You know, he he said, wow, I have the best freak show ever and I'm going to squeeze it for every dime that I can. Oh, you guys can't record an album. That's okay. We'll sign the contract and get it killed. You know, a, I think a and M records. What was that record label? They a couple record labels dropped them. EMI dropped them. There's another record label dropped them. And then they finally uh, did their album with Virgin records. But it's just interesting to think that like, you know, Malcolm, instead of being bummed that they couldn't record now, they're like, 
we're getting all this money via advances and you know it's like oh the band the, the band that nobody wants to pick up that that's what that's what that dude was stoked on you know so in a way i guess it kind of is apropos that that matlock and vicious split one quarter of the of of the ownership of the sex pistols right because one you know the sex pistols are infinitely more popular for the reasons that i said you know uh because of vicious's reputation i just never thought about it like that until now so that's interesting that is very interesting okay let's keep reading a tremendous cult of personality surrounds sid vicious and it is not only misguided but dangerous this following doesn't account for the fact that the late musician was deeply was a deeply flawed individual not in the tragic shakespearean sense as much of our dead idols are remembered but in a way that antagonists are immortalized uh this is not to say that he was a force of unadulterated evil but he wasn't far off so the writer is, you know, saying, hey, like, look, he's not just a misunderstood product of his environment. He's not a complex, complex antihero, but he's actually not far off from unadulterated evil. I don't that that's an area where I kind of disagree. I do think maybe he's definitely not the complex antihero, but he's definitely a misunderstood product of his environment. Um, th that that is for sure, I think. So to call anybody real. I mean, there are there are people out there that are unadulterated evil for sure. But I don't know if Sid Vicious necessarily falls into that category. He did murder his girlfriend, though. So, you know, or apparently, supposedly I, I, I think it, I think it's the most. I mean, I don't think I, th I don't think there's any foul play there, man. I think it, what the most likely thing that happened is that that Sid murdered his girlfriend. And that's probably what happened, man. I don't know if I've where I've stood on that, that um that in the past, but that's where I stand on it right now. As we, as we're discussing it, as I think about it, uh, in his lifetime, vicious was wrongly championed as some, as something that he was not, which only exacerbated his dark side. So, you know, almost like encouraged, encouraging, right? Infamously, the entire charade finally came to the fore after the mysterious death of his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen in 1978 and his miserable demise less than a year later reflecting the sentiment that vicious was promoted as something he wasn't is a quote from the controversial manager of the sex pistols malcolm mclaren who once said if johnny rotten is the voice of punk then vicious is the attitude uh reflecting on that sentiment that vicious was promoted as something he wasn't is a quote yeah i mean i kind of actually agree i mean he was I don't know. Maybe he wasn't the attitude, but he sure co-opted what the perceived attitude was in that kind, in that kind of way. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. He might've been the attitude, but unfortunately that is, that is all he was. Ironically, Sid Vicious is hailed as one of the most iconic musicians of all time, despite the fact that he could not play any instrument. That's the weird thing. He's technically he's a musician and he's, lauded as an icon but he doesn't really play he didn't really play that instrument although however he could have been a front man i think he would have worked as a front man he almost was after after rotten left and they were sort of limping on trying to complete this documentary the great rock and roll swindle um sid vicious was a um sid vicious was like the singer front man not in the sense that he was a shoddy bassist, but that he couldn't play a note at all. Even Steve Jones, the ba the band's guitarist, has claimed that Vicious only recorded one Pistol song called Bodies, and even then he's out of tune. That's my favorite Pistol song, I think. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love Holidays in the Sun. I love No Feeling, but I think Bodies is like, Bodies is great, man. It's just so great. And even then, he's out of tune, added to the sense that Vicious is undeserving of the status he has bestowed as both Jones and the legendary frontman come bassist of Motorhead, Lemmy. Lemmy Kilmeister. Kilmeister? I'm sorry, Lemmy. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Attempted to teach him. Lemmy also played bass in The Damned for a hot minute, just for a second, just for a brief second. However, Vicious still didn't have the care or intellect wherewithal 
to notice what an opportunity he was afforded. I mean, it was also political. As I said, you know, Steve Jones, the dynamic was Steve Jones and Paul Cook were friends and they were tight and they sort of had one corner in the band. And then you had Glenn Matlock and Johnny Rotten, who both did not like each other and were also outside of that core of Steve Jones and Paul Cook. And so then you have Johnny Rotten sort of turn into Malcolm and Malcolm turn into Johnny Rotten and being like, let's get Glenn out of here and let's bring in Sid because he really looks the part. He's perfect. You know what I'm saying? John Bullet says, I know you haven't mentioned this yet, but wasn't Glenn and Jerry with Sid's mom the night or the next day after his death? Oh, we've John, we've talked about that a lot on the channel. It was Sid was with him. S uh, no, not Sid. Uh, Jerry. Jerry and Howie Pyro were, were with him. And we've talked about it. There are videos on this channel that we've talked about it ad nauseum. So I'm going to skip over that, but yes, John, yes, that is the truth. In addition to the fact that he was not to mince my words, untalented vicious's dark side was so prominent that it is the sole factor that most of his contemporaries remember him. Do you think it's strange that the stories of him that picture him in a favorable light are rare, if not non-existent? Um, you know, I think that, I think that there needs to be more examples here. Again, I love this dude's writing, but like you need to, I think you need to back that up a little bit more. You can't just throw that out there without, without, um, without example, without adding some sort of example, I think. Um, yeah, so. Vicious was a violent abuser and given the, the juncture that society finds itself in today with us being quick to point out flaws in celebrities and when appropriate reprimand or even cancel them. I say that in quotes for it. It is strange that vicious still remains so coveted. There's a, there's so many like that. It's weird, man. I mean, look at Jimmy page, dude, Jimmy page, like kidnapped a 14 year old girl, man. You know, David Bowie and uh, Lori Maddox, I believe her name was. I mean, there's so much out there that we do pick or choose, you know, who we want to hold to certain standards versus others. And a lot of the stuff gets sort of swept under the that was crazy times rock and roll. I just read a thing about the Chili Peppers. And I mean, the Chili Pepper, I mean, Anthony Kiedis has admitted to some crazy stuff in his book. So it's true. Sometimes like. So, like a guy like Vicious, like these things fly out the window. I mean, the dude, we already said what he did, you know, and yes, he remains coveted. Remembering 45 years of the 100 Club Punk special last year, artist John Keane, who was present at the festival when British punk came together, presented an antidote, antidote, antidote that painted Vicious in a very sinister light. Um, the story of Vicious throwing a glass at the front man of the dam, Dave Vanian, is a well-known one. The incident stemmed due to his anger that the band hired Vanian instead of him as the front man. But what resulted from his anger caused life-changing side effects for one crowd member who was partially blind when the glass smashed on a pillar at the back of the stage and flew into her eye which is very reminiscent of Bigsby in train spot. remember he throws the glass over the thing and it's really, it's played up for comedy in, 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 in um, train spotting, but it really is. It's serious, dude. I mean, that's grave. What, what we just read. Kane was in vicious's immediate vicinity when it all went down and what the future sex pistols basis said to him confirms how nefarious he was. Keen remembered I turned to a guy standing directly behind me and said, did you throw something? His very menacing response was, you didn't see, you didn't see me throw nothing, did ya? This, of course, was true. And his general demeanor suggested to me that I should not pursue the matter. Later on, police came and the guy who someone told me called himself Sid Vicious was arrested. I mean, it sounds pretty run of the mill standard for what... <laughs> what someone would do. Yes, uh Angus, I agree, man. That's exactly right. Um Sid's mom absolutely enabled him. 
against the 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 punk rock image totally 100 percent 150 percent it's it's been rumored that it was uh i think her name was ann beverly it's rumored well she was also into dope she was a junkie too and it's rumored that she gave him a hot shot for those of you who don't know a hot shot is a uh a intentionally lethal dose of usually heroin uh, meant to kill someone sometimes sometimes as a form of you know straight up like i guess murder and sometimes sometimes it's an it can be accidental if it's stepped on in the wrong way but in any case supposedly she thought that he you know he had suffered essay in jail um in Rikers, if you know what I mean, he was um, he was accosted in that way from uh, from the back, and supposedly Anne just knew he would not last in there and was trying to help him escape in another way. That's one of many, and then there's other things they talk about. There was a pact, something like that. Oh man. John, thank you so much for the donation, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, John bought some coffee uh, over at Ko-Fi. Check out the Ko-Fi. Link is in the description. Actually, link is in the comments if anybody else wants to buy a coffee. It really helps here. Really helps us uh, keep keep the operation going. Um, and yeah, so thank you. Thank you, John. Really appreciate that. So, yeah, so she was like, she was, she that most certainly she was an enabler for sure. For sure. It seems as if the 100 Club, the home of the first wave of British punk, would see Vicious enact two of his most violent marks on the world when uh, the new musical express NME reporter Nick Kent, who's featured in Pistol and was dating the uh, uh, Chrissy, Chrissy Hine from the Pretenders, later of the Pretenders. Uh, he attended a pistol show at the Oxford Street Club. Vicious was in such a bad mood that what ensured was so graphic that it requires a trigger warning. When Kent asked Vicious to move out of his way, Vicious allegedly pulled a rusty bike chain from his coat pocket and wrapped Kent on the head three times with blood splattering on the walls behind him. I mean, that is nasty and most certainly... Um, vicious the psychotic i mean that's what it is it is his psychotic violent behavior i mean what a look and, and of course mclaren is like yeah let's put that in the band that's a great idea wow that's just gonna take us to new heights right uh the site the psychotic behavior didn't stop there either hold on we have to take another we have to take another break oh <laughs> rue Re, uh, remove the Ko-Fi bot by accident. I thought it was a, uh, uh, you know, a corn, uh, C-O-R-N. We have to use uh, veiled terms here. Bot. Uh, dude, totally understandable. I appreciate your hypervigilance. Hopefully it will be able to come back and it's not permanently banned, but Rue, I appreciate you. Rue is a, um, Rue is, a, I guess what you would call, he's the chat moderator, one of them one of my OGs who's been here forever and uh, entrusted with the sacred duty of keeping the chat clean. So Rue, don't, don't even, don't even bat an eyelash, man. Totally understandable. And good to see you, buddy. Hope you are well. Uh, we're going to go to a quick sponsor break. Do you know what else is sticky besides blood splattered on walls caused by rusty bicycle chains? Stickers. And fr the From His Channel is sponsored by riotstickers.com that's right see it right here riotstickers.com is where we get all our stickers sharpie riot uh, uh josh josh sharpie he um he is been a wonderful sponsor and supporter of this channel he made this beautiful banner he's printed up t-shirts all sorts of stuff you can get all sorts of stuff from riotstickers.com uh link is in the description and uh we just we just love them so if you have your if you're printing needs go there i mean these stickers they do not fade they do not they they hold up really nicely in in weather they're vinyl they're great stickers man i can't say enough good things about riotstickers.com let's play the little less than jake sponsored video hold on one second i'm gonna get this this mother trucker up 
up here real quick. Here it is. And we make stickers, banners, and buttons too. Posters and promo cards. There's nothing we can't print for you. From stage backdrops to bass drum heads, we can print on shirts. We can print on hats. We can print. Scottish accent. Okay, and we're back. So now you know about riotstickers.com. Biz says that she is not particularly fond of Sid Vicious herself. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I'm with you. I didn't really think too much of Sid at all. The psychotic behavior did not stop there either. After the death of Nancy Spungen, when Vicious had been released from jail after being immediately arrested and charged with second degree murder, which I believe is murder in the moment. So first degree murder, murder that first degree murder is murder with intent, with malice, pre-planned murder. Uh, second degree murder is murder that happens passionately in the moment. You don't intend to murder someone, but you end up doing it. And um, third, and you make a conscious decision to do it in the moment. So it's unplanned. And then I believe third degree murder is slightly different. What is third degree murder as compared to manslaughter? How do they, those differ? Does anybody know? I'm not going to Google it right now, but I believe there's, there's a difference, whatever. In any case, after uh, being released from jail, after being charged with second degree murder, he attended a Scoffers show in New York uh, when he was asked by Patty Smith's brother, Todd, Patty Smith of the Patty Smith group, you know, horses, all that and whatnot. Not a big fan of Patty Smith personally. Todd, Todd Smith, Patty's brother, was asked to leave the band's drum tech, Tara, alone after pinching her and doing other strange things. Sounds like some sort of psychotic, antisocial way of flirting. Maybe. I don't know. Vicious smashed a glass beer bottle across Smith's face. You know, that's the funny thing is, you know, Vicious was not was not a, a big guy. He was not probably not a very muscular guy at all. But what made him so dangerous was he that, you know, if there was glass in the vicinity, he had no um, reservation about picking it up and smashing him in your face. And even if you have a hundred pounds on a guy like Sid Vicious, if you get a glass smashed in your face, I, I don't think weight or stature really matters at that point. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, DLW says, I am not a big fan of Sid. However, any other, I'm not a big fan of Sid. Anyhow, I don't think the pistols would have lasted even if they never met him. That being said, my way was great. Yeah, I, I, I think that they, I think that after rotten left, there could have almost even been a second life. They could have brought Glenn Matlock back into the band's basis and had, the original version of the, the pistols that they intended with Sid on vocals. It might've worked. They might've been in some alternate timeline. There's a second album that with that kind of lineup. Isn't that, isn't that crazy to think about somewhere, somewhere in the, the multiverse. Um, so after he smashed a glass beer bottle across Smith's face, um, Todd was sent straight to the hospital because the attack was so severe. Uh, that was the final violent act of Sid Vicious's life, but many had come before. When the bassist was living with uh, Pistol's frontman John Lydon in a squat, it was claimed that not only did he cut himself with old tid cans, but that Vicious once allegedly strangled a cat with his belt, the latter of which is a classic of an example of, psych of, of psychopathic behavior, as you can get. It's true. That is that's that's a huge, huge warning sign. Right. Even John Lydon's father was aware of the behavior of his son's bandmate. He later recalled if he was sitting here and no one was taking any notice of him. Uh, I should do this in a British accent. Hold on. 
uh, if he was sitting if, if he was sitting here and no one was taking any notice of him, he'd cut his hand or something to attract attention. You have to take your mind off of everything else and look at him. Of course, then we got the love of his life, Nancy Spungen. Even though they had a tumultuous relationship, Spungen bore the brunt of Vicious's violence. He was known to have physically abused her numerous times before her death. Uh, this only worsened after the pistol split, leaving a man with no musical talent and outlook needing to express himself in the only way he knew how through violence. I I mean, that's I think that's sort of like a take like I don't I don't know if it's as cut and dry. Oh, I did not. So uh, I guess Vicious was taller than I thought. Vicious is six two, man. I did not know that. Um. Jagger says Sid references the cat incident in my way. So I didn't know that. So the lyrics are are are, diff, are different. Angus says many therapists would call Sid an attention seeker. Hmm. In any case, I, you know, I I think that you know after the pistols broke up, Sid Sid was trying to to make Sid had this. I mean, he had clout as being in the pistols, man. I mean, he was. He essentially was somewhat of, I mean, he was like punk royalty. And to use such a, 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 I don't know, for lack of a better term, I hate to use that term even. It sounds so stupid. I mean, he was he was a high profile, he was high profile in, in the punk world as a result of his time with the Pistols. And very easily, had he not been so dysfunctional and had Nancy not been so dysfunctional, probably could have turned that into a very successful very lucrative solo career as Sid Vicious. You know, I mean, think about it. Who would have thought that Iggy Pop would survive? Iggy Pop has outlived everybody, and that's a whole other conversation because he's freaking awesome. Um, because I love Iggy so much. But in a world where Iggy Pop could have survived with everything that Iggy Pop was doing, you would imagine under different circumstances that Sid Vicious maybe would be doing the same thing that Iggy Pop is doing. Um, a solo frontman singer, definitely not uh, classically trained, still doing his his punk thing in his seventies. Again, that's another multiverse. That's another place in the multiverse timeline, right? You could, I could imagine it. I could absolutely imagine it. Um, but yeah, their relationship was their relationship was so toxic, man. I mean, it was, ooh. I mean, that's the thing, even though it's like it's not historically accurate or it's not super accurate, but I've got blisters on my fingers. It's not super accurate, but the Alex Cox movie is really captures the essence, the theme of the pistols. You know what I mean? OK, Jody says that, uh, so Jody quoted. The, thank you, Jody Ramon. Here are the lyrics. To think I killed a cat, and may I say, not in a gay way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not me. I did it my way. There you go. I didn't realize that they had changed the lyrics. That just goes to show how little I paid attention whenever I've heard that song. It all came to a head when Vicious awoke on October 12th, 1978, to find Nancy Spungen dead with a knife wound in her gut. He immediately called the front desk of the hotel and alerted them while waiting for his assistance vicious this was in the chelsea hotel 23rd street in uh, new york city manhattan vicious roamed the halls crying uncontrollably throwing himself at walls telling a neighbor i killed her i can't live without her she must have fallen on the knife i i am sure he was charged with exactly what occurred second degree murder or th th third degree murder one of the two he didn't intend it, but his with this propensity for violence, his propensity for violence led to her death. It, it's just it, I, it's clear as day, man. It's clear as day. Of course, Spungen's death is tragic and we will never know the truth. But it is strange that even after this and all that came before, he is lauded in such a cultish fashion. I mean, is it not the same with Manson? 
you know, when you think the glorification of Manson and the Manson cult, and when you actually like break down what the crime was committed against Sharon Tate and the others, it's so unquestionably horrible. It's just the worst thing you ever heard in your life. And if Roman Polanski wasn't such a monster, you might feel more sympathy for him than maybe you do. You know, in the idea of like what that dude endured as a result of Manson. And yet people wear Manson shirts. They love, they worship Manson, you know, uh, or they worship the cult, the cult, uh, the pop culture cult. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an A word. Uh, appeal, appeal, the pop culture cult appeal of these things, right? Angus says he played two gigs as a lead singer after the murder. Yes, I believe. And I knew the guitarist of one of those gigs who if on my channel, he played with Billy Rath from the Heartbreakers, his band, the Heartbreaking Street Pirates. And what was funny, you know, I should have asked him. I should have asked him about what it was like to play those gigs. Um, he played guitar for for Sid Vicious. Pure Hell opened the band. Um, of course, Spongeon's death is tragic and we will never know the truth. But it is strange that even after this and all that came before he is lauded in such cult fashion, despite the questions surrounding his role in Spongeon's death, the evidence is there for all to see. Vicious was not a man who should be revered, but quite the opposite. His place in pop culture should be properly revised and the posters, T-shirts and DVDs should be thrown onto the bonfire. And mind you. Can you imagine the amount of money that this dude makes? I mean, that his estate makes all this time later for being a brand. He was a human being that was turned into a brand. Um, as as does most in in of, of that elk. And that's it, man. That's the that's the thing. Yeah, Bob Riley. Yes, there are some interesting documentaries. There's Who Killed Nancy. There's one interview with one of the detectives, and he said the knife was wiped clean of any fingerprints and lay, laying in a suitcase. Also, money missing. I just find it interesting as all. I, you know, it, maybe it could have been. It could have been cut. It could have been um, vicious or somebody who was a friend of vicious trying to cover it up. There could have been someone who had a stake in vicious's career, a clinger honor who was trying to preserve you know, whatever future prospects might hold. Who knows, man? Who knows? DLW says, speaking of the heartbreakers, Billy Idol's doing Born to Lose in his set list. Great track. Going to catch him live next week. That's awesome, DLW. I hope you have a great time. And um, I'm glad someone's performing it because they're all dead. They're all gone. And I'm pleased to have met and interviewed both Walter Lure and Billy Rath. I knew Billy. I actually knew Billy um, in his last years. He started coming around in the city and I knew him. Um, but yeah. And then of course, Glenn Danzig writes the song horror business that we all love so much And horror business is Glenn's idea. I literally, if I had a nickel for every time I said this on YouTube, I probably would have a lot of nickels. It's his juxtaposition. I just, I guess I'm obsessed with it. I just love the idea of the song being those two things. Because it wasn't something that I first realized when I first listened to that song. It was some. It was an epiphany one day when I'm thinking about the lyrics. I'm going, oh, my God, he's singing about Sid and Nancy as if it was right out of Psycho. Psycho 78. You know, you don't go in the bathroom with me. The bathroom in Psycho, the bathroom in the Chelsea Hotel. I mean, it was brilliant juxtaposition, man. One of my favorite examples of such. So um, what else can I tell you? What else can I say? I will say this. Um, I have made a feature length film. It's going to be doing a festival run. If you are a Patreon member, if you are a YouTube member, you can watch the movie in its full entirety in 4K right now. Um, for everybody else, here's the trailer. I'm really not happy with this trailer. I was a rush job. Uh, the color correction is not great. The mixing is not great. But Yet, this is the trailer for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to play that for you real quick. This is the trailer for Gouge Away, winner of the Genre Blast Independent Spirit Award at the Genre Blast Film Festival 2022, a.k.a. Genre Blast 7, uh, played at the Alamo Draft House Saturday Midnight, Midnight Movie. 
will you do some yoga poses for me? I know you'll do a yoga pose for your Uncle Elmo. Right, Anthony? It's my friend Stanley. He's missing. Texts, emails, smoke signals, no answer. I'm just worried. Give me his info and I'll see what I can do. No promises. You know, sometimes it's just really hard to play the cards that life deals you. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm not in the mood to talk about music right now. Oh, not Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee, the gas. There's cartridges and the gas works that comes to go with it. Chill, put that away. You shitty little asshole. Who the fuck do you think you are? Tony the Stamper is back and bloodthirsty for territory. You call that a fucking play? You're gonna whip you, motherfucker. You never came back here. There will be blood. <laughs> And there it is. That is Gouge Away. If you know the Pixies, if you're a fan of the Pixies, you will know that Gouge Away is in reference to a song off of Doolittle, one of my favorite tracks. Um, so, uh, yeah, that is, I mean, I guess that brings our show to a close. Uh, man, if we could figure out how to do this for an hour, I could go every single night. It's what it's just like the multiple doing it. Like I love doing it. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like, I got stuff to do. It's just tough. It's tough to go so long. Um, <laughs> couch away, couch away. You can couch away. Stay all day. You guys like the new shorter format prong. Oh, nice. Prong is coming next month. That's pretty sweet. I'm supposed to see Fishbone on Sunday. It'll be like my first proper show in since 2019. I'm very excited. I uh, can't wait. And that'll probably be it on the show front. There, oh man, King Kong and Barbecue Show are coming on Saturday. I don't think I can swing that too. Probably not going to go down. Um, what else? So as I said earlier, in case you missed it, stay tuned. Erie Vaughn Part Two. Marky Ramon, more stuff, more more interviews, more everything. Uh, <laughs> maybe have a guest for topics like this, and it would drag out longer. No, Jagger, that's the opposite, man. We don't want it to drag out longer. We want it to go. We want it to be shorter. We we want it to be shorter. That's the plan. Uh, Jody, the old woman who said, who the fuck do you think you are while smoking a piece of licorice is my, was my 92 year old grandmother. May she rest in peace. That's my grandma. And, uh, it was her final acting gig before she passed away. Ah, DRI. That's cool. I'm very, she was very proud of that role. I'm very proud of that role and she's memorialized forever. And that's really her personality. She was, she was raunchy like that. She was raunchy like that. Yeah, Rue's going to be watching the movie tomorrow night. Yes, on the projector. Hell yeah, Rue. I hope you like it, man. It's weird, Rue. It's a weird midnight movie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you enjoy them. Good, good, good. All right. That's going to close it. That's going to close this out. Hey, um, Angus, thank you. I really appreciate your comments. I, I Guys, Everybody who comes in and tunes in, listens and throws down comments, it just makes the, it keeps me fueled. Like I could keep going when I have the comments. It really helps. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I just really appreciate it. Uh, cough, cough, cool, Rue. Cough, cool. Um, well, I'm going to take us out with uh, one last sponsored link. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to get all these sponsored things in all the time? Usually it doesn't happen. 
as you know, I have a Patreon. I was just talking about it. You can watch that trailer, the movie from that trailer right now. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait uh, close to a year before it might hit YouTube. Maybe. Depends on the distribution situation. Um, but you can watch it right now if you sign up for the Patreon or become a YouTube member. Lots of stuff on there that's not on here. Um, so check it out. Here is the Patreon. Before I go, I always, always say peace and hair grease. That's what we do. And here is Patreon. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeff. So I've decided to make a Patreon. What is Patreon? I don't know how to define a Patreon. Let me look it up. Patreon is a membership platform that makes it very easy for creators to get paid for the things that they're already creating. I want to do it full time. I want this to be my full time job. In my efforts to make that happen, I've set up this platform. Is it going to work? Is it going to be successful? I don't know, but I would rather try and crash and burn than not try at all. The goal is to create enough passive revenue so that I can continue to do this full time uninterrupted. Why? Because I love to do this. I love creating content. I love making videos. I love shooting films. I love doing podcasts. In case you couldn't tell, I love to talk and I never shut the fuck up. <laughs> so right now I've kept the Patreon incredibly simple. There's two tiers and that may change in the future. The Murdergram is a simple way to extend support for all of the hours and hours of free content on the channel for nothing more than a dollar. 38 cents goes to Patreon. What's a buck 38, eh? It's less than a cup of coffee, but it's a great way that you can show support for very little effort. When you divide that dollar 38 by the hours and hours and hours of time spent listening to this endless drivel of content, the dollar cost average works out. Next up is the YouTube casualty for $6.66. <laughs> the YouTube casualty is loaded to the gills. Enjoy the archive ad-free as well as ad-free early access to special docu-style podcast videos, music reaction commentaries, and the like a month before they drop on YouTube, loaded with ads, I might add. You're also going to get exclusive content and behind the scenes content that is not available on YouTube or anywhere else. So you get to peek behind the veil. And believe me, there's a couple of choice pieces. Most of all, more than anything, whether you join the Patreon or not, I just wanna thank each and every one of you that comes to the channel, that watches all the shows, that leaves comments, that participates, that subscribes, that's really the most important thing. This is just trying to find a way to earn a living as an artist. And with that, thank you for my TED Talk. Join the Patreon, because we need you! 66 cents.